Welcome to MAKE, Hands-On Intro to Engineering Design, a course taught at the University of South Florida. In this video, we're going to discuss how to create a part from a technical drawing. Also included in this video is feature patterning. Hello. Today we are going to be combining everything that we've learned in the previous videos to create a complete part in Autodesk Inventor. Uh, as you can see on the screen, I've got a technical drawing of a stepper motor. Uh, this was provided by SparkFun, where the part is sold. And as you can see, it's got all of the relevant dimensions necessary to draw the part on there. So let's just go ahead and get started here. We can go down and select Autodesk Inventor. And then the new file dialog is opened up. I'm going to double click here on the standard millimeter part. And uh, we're just going to get started and create a new sketch. I'm going to select down here to create the base, and what I'm going to do first is create the base of the motor. So we're going to create this section here. Um, so the way we're going to do that is by first drawing this profile and then extruding it uh, 34 millimeters. So we're going to go back over to Inventor and start the drawing. I'm just going to draw four arbitrary lines for the outline first, ensuring that the corners are all connected. Uh, and then I'm going to do some quick dimensioning between these two lines. We know it's got to be, well, we'll check it. It has to be 42.3, so 42.3 millimeters. Enter. Select the next dimension and these two lines. 42.3. Enter. <clears throat> next, we're going to draw the edges, the corners that we'll cut out. Again, these are just arbitrarily drawn, but I'm ensuring to connect the endpoints of the line with the edges of the line that I've already drawn. So we've drawn those, um, and we're going to apply a few sketch constraints. Uh, since you can see that these are all symmetrical uh, on each corner, we can go back and select the equal constraint for each one of these lines, because they're all going to be the same length. So now that all of the lines are going to be the same length, we can hit escape and uh, we'll dimension one more. We'll say that this angle has to be 45 degrees. Then we'll dimension the distance between these points. If we look over on our PDF, it is 31 millimeters. And then we can dimension this line. Again, 31 millimeters. And one more dimension. 45. And we are done. Now we have to just trim off the edges. And if we go back, you can now see looks identical to the profile that we are trying to create. So now we can finish the sketch and make our first extrusion. We'll select extrude. Again, this is the only profile we have, so it will automatically select the profile we, we uh, drew previously. We're going to select distance and uh, we'll go to the drawing 34 max. So we'll select 34 millimeters here in Autodesk Inventor. Hit enter, and now you can see we've got our base shape starting to take form. Next, we're going to go back to the drawing, and we're going to draw this circular extrusion here. You can see it's a 22 millimeter diameter circle extruded 2 millimeters. So we'll go back to Inventor. Now to draw this uh, profile, we'll click here on the top surface of the, sh of the solid body that we just extruded. If we left click, this little dialog pops up and we can select new sketch. Alternatively, we could just select this face and go to the uh, upper left hand corner and select 2D sketch. So we'll go here and click create sketch. It brings that face normal to our view. And then we'll put our circular point here. As you can see, the uh, guidelines are directing me to the center point of the solid body. So I'm going to drag that out and select 22 millimeters and hit enter. 
Uh, that's all we need for this portion of the sketch. I'm going to click Finish Sketch and Extrude. And this time we have the option to select either one of these uh, profiles. So we'll choose to select the profile we want to extrude. Select 2 millimeters. Check out the preview. Looks about right. We can actually get it in the same orientation here. So it looks good. We'll hit OK. And the solid body has now been formed. And you can see the shape coming about now. Now let's go back to our drawing. The next uh, feature we have to draw is the actual drive shaft. This is a circular pin, 5 millimeters in diameter and 24 millimeters long, measured from the top of the first solid body that we created. So we'll have to make sure that that is our reference point when we are uh, creating this dimension for the length of the rod. So we'll go back to Inventor. If we recall, it's 5 millimeters diameter. So what we're going to do is actually draw on the surface of the first body that we created. And this is order, in order to get the proper dimension. So we're going to click that first surface in the same way we did for the uh, second solid body that we extruded. And again, we're going to select Create Sketch. I'm going to draw a circle right here in the center of the face. And this is 5 millimeters in diameter to correspond to the uh, pin there. We're going to change our view. You can't see the circle that we just drew as it's underneath this other extruded body. We can finish the sketch. And we can click Extrude, and we can actually go and select the profile of the drive shaft that we just drew. This is available to us because we drew it underneath that solid body, and the profile selection tool actually allows us to select under solid bodies. So we can click that, select 24 as our extrusion length, go up here and check out the preview. You can see it looks about right. We'll rotate here. looks good. We can hit OK and that will draw our shaft. <clears throat> so now to make this part look a little bit more realistic, if we go back to the drawing you can see that there is uh, a chamfer on the tip of the drive shaft. The dimensions aren't really given, um, but if we want to make this part look the most realistic we can add that. We'll go up here to our Modify uh, section of the ribbon, click Chamfer. We can select this edge. We'll zoom in so we can get a better idea of how it looks. Um, if we go back to the drawing, we can see that there's actually a very small amount of material being removed there. So this seems about too big. We're going to adjust it, uh, make it half a millimeter. Preview comes up, and this appears to be much more in line with what the drawing looks like. We're going to hit OK. Now you can see it looks a little more realistic. The final thing we're going to do uh, is draw these circles, uh, which are the threaded holes uh, for the uh, screws to mount the, the motor onto something. Um, the thread designation is given here, and although this character here is in Chinese, I looked it up on Google, and it is the symbol for the word deep. So this is saying that there are four M3 holes, four and a half millimeters deep. Um, and again, the thread designation is M3, so that indicates to us that the hole is going to be three millimeters in diameter. So we'll go back over to our part. Again, select this face and draw a sketch. I'm going to place our uh, circle for our hole arbitrarily. We're going to push three to make it a three millimeter diameter hole. And we're going to go back and check the uh, dimensions on this drawing. <clears throat> we can see that the holes are 31 millimeters apart, uh, symmetrically around the center point of the motor face. So we're going to go over here and apply these dimensions. Um, halfway would be 15.5. So we can draw this dimension here, 15.5. And then we can take the second dimension, 15.5. And so our, now, our hole now appears in the right location. We're going to say Finish Sketch. And now we're going to do the extruded cut. 
This is similar to a regular extrude, except when you select your profile, you select this option, uh, second from the top. It's an extruded cut, as opposed to a join. If you select cut, it will actually cut a hole in the shape of the uh, profile that you've drawn in the sketch. So we're going to select distance, and because it is 4.5 millimeters deep, we're going to select 4.5. You can see the preview show up, a uh, small hole being cut. We'll hit OK. And so now we have a single hole. We're going to apply a thread. Uh, and if you recall from the thread uh, video, you just have to select the circular uh, face. We're going to select that. If we go to our specification, it's already selected the proper, proper thread designation. We're going to hit OK. So now we have a single threaded hole drawn on the part. I'm going to show you the first way to uh, create multiple instances of this threaded hole. Uh, the first tool we're going to use is the rectangular pattern. The rectangular pattern allows you to select features and then select either one or more directions to uh, pattern these features. So we'll select the two features that we want to pattern, which are the extruded cut and the thread. And then we're going to select the directions that we want to extrude these or pattern these features in. Um, the directions can be any uh, line ac or axis. Um, so what we're going to do is since we want it to uh, go in this direction, we can select this line and you'll see an arrow indicating the direction on the screen. Um, so that will be our first direction. We want two total instances in this direction and that we want them to be 31 millimeters apart. So if we get a better view of this, you can see in one direction we've now got two instances of the part, 32, 31 millimeters apart. We'll select direction two. We're going to use this line as our direction. Um, and as you can see, the arrow indicates the wrong direction. So we can go up here to the flip direction. Now you'll notice the arrow has flipped, and you can see four instances of the part on the screen. If we change our distance here to 31, you can now see that the part, uh, the feature is being patterned over the part in the proper locations. We get a top view. You can see they are symmetrical around the center point. We can hit OK. And now if we get the right view, you can see the holes have now been patterned over the face. I'm now going to show you a second method to pattern the uh, threaded holes that we created. Um, this time we will use the circular pattern tool. Uh, the circular pattern tool allows you to pattern things around an axis, um, but in, spe in special cases we can actually create the equivalent of a rectangular pattern. So what I'm going to do is select the circular pattern tool and select this thread. Um, this will allow, um, I'm sorry, we'll select the thread and the extrusion, and this will allow us uh, then to select a rotation axis. A rotation axis can be uh, a circular um, path or face or an axis. So any one of these faces will do. We can select this one and it will create a circular pattern. If you notice, this is saying six instances, 360 degrees around. Well, we want our four instances, 360 degrees around. And as you can see, this creates the proper pattern for us. Um, if using this for something other than to pattern four holes, you can select a different angle and uh, it allows you to create any sort of circular pattern you'd like. I find this is sometimes easier for creating four items than using the rectangular uh, pattern. So we can hit OK and again we can now see that our four holes have been properly patterned. So now that you have a complete part, uh, you may be wondering how you can create uh, an image, uh, maybe not a completely fully 100% rendered image, but if you just wanted to pass this along to uh, show a quick example of what you're doing um, to say a supervisor or, or somebody else you're working with, you can actually pretty easily render um, some basic images of your part. So to do that, you can go up here to the upper right left hand corner, select the inventor menu item, and the menu will pop down and you go and select export. This gives you several export options including images, PDFs, or CAD formats. Uh, say you wanted to e export an image, you could select the image export and it gives you several different uh, options to uh, and file types to export as. This can be useful just for sharing your work. 
Uh, we'll discuss uh, high resolution re renderings later on in a separate video, but for quick sharing, the file export option is, uh, is a good way to share your work. This concludes our video. Thanks for watching.